Hello and welcome to Songs for the Struggling Artist, the blogcast. This is episode 341. My name is Emily Rainbow Davis. Thank you for listening. So today's blog is about a television program, which is based on a book that I've already written about. <laughs> so, and I wasn't going to watch the TV show. I promise I wasn't. But then I just got curious. And then I, even though I didn't like it, I kept watching it. I don't know. You know, sometimes I actually have gotten very adept at just stopping watching things that aren't interesting me. So like, you know, 20 minutes into the movie, I don't like it. It's out. I'm over. We're out. We're not doing it. But this show, even though, I don't know, there was just something, I guess I was curious to see what they were going to do. Anyway, it's Fleischman is in trouble. I'm going to tell you more about it. A lot of people I know have seen this television program, and some people enjoyed it, and others did not. So, you know, it is definitely receiving some mixed reviews in my peer group. And I will say, I can't recommend it. I didn't like it at all, but I did keep watching it. So it is compelling. I'll definitely give it that. I will. I'll give it, I'll give it to it. It kept me, I kept watching. That's it. And just before I read this one to you, uh, I should say it sort of builds on two previous blog posts that uh, you may or may not have heard the blog casts for. And those are one called Trixie Feminists, which was about my reading of this book. And then the opening of this is a reference to a blog post I did called Could Gen X Women Play Gen X Women, Please, which was just a few episodes ago. Trixie Feminists was, I think, last year or two years ago, um, but th this one was just a couple months ago. So, um, But it's just a quick reference at the top, and I don't think you necessarily need to have heard it for this one to make sense. Uh, so... Without further ado, here it is. It is called Some Gen X Quibbles with Fleischman is in Trouble. This is going to be a regular thing now, isn't it? This thing where millennials play Gen Xers now? This is going to happen a lot from here on out, I'm starting to realize. <laughs> I'd already watched seven episodes of Fleischman is in Trouble, but it hadn't been bothering me much. I was too preoccupied with how it compared to the book and what it changed and wondering if I felt differently about it as a TV show. But then Lizzie Kaplan's character went to a barbecue in New Jersey, and the scene was just chock full of model gorgeous young millennials. And then she walked past four millennials, or maybe Gen Z men, playing Freebird in the backyard. And suddenly the generational stuff was all I could think about. You all are familiar with the song Free Bird, right? It's a Leonard Skinner song from 1973. For Gen X, Free Bird was a joke. A literal joke. You probably could not have gone to a concert in the 80s without some joker yelling Free Bird to the band in any moment of silence. And it was very clear that no one actually wanted to hear Freebird. When a band got tired of this joke and learned Freebird so they could play it when someone shouted it, people laughed after the first few chords, but only a sadistic band would play the whole thing. And I will confess to you, I understood this as a joke long before I ever actually heard the song Freebird. I was really surprised when I finally listened to it, honestly. That's Freebird? It was not at all what I expected. I was imagining an epic, like Stairway to Heaven. And it was this thin, maudlin thing instead. Anyway, to see a bunch of young people singing Freebird at a backyard barbecue in a completely unironic and earnest manner really confused me. People like this song now? This character is supposed to be 41 in the show. So she is technically an elder millennial, as the eldest millennials are turning 42 this year. But the show is set in 2016. So 
she's actually Gen X, just like in the book. This Gen X character is having a fully earnest moment with the joke song of the 80s? What the hell is going on? So I looked up Taffy Brodesser Ackner, the writer of this book, as well as the showrunner of the show, and yes, she's Gen X. She's 47. But, and this will be significant for cultural signifiers, she spent a lot of her youth in a Hasidic community. My girl probably had very little exposure to Gen X youth culture in the moment, which may be how this free bird situation occurred. And it may be why there's a lot of confusing cultural and generational issues in this show. I suspect the delay in entering the pop culture landscape might mean that she may be more millennial than Gen X in her cultural influences. Like, She's telling a Gen X story about aging using iconic millennial actors. Jesse Eisenberg is the epitome of millennial leading man. I'm not sure you could get a more representative actor for his generation. Maybe Daniel Radcliffe? But for American millennial angst, top of the list. I saw a tweet about this show suggesting that Jesse Eisenberg grappling with middle age meant that the tweeter, too, was facing down middle age. It becomes a millennial middle age story in a Gen X outfit. I found the whole experience disorienting. I wasn't crazy about the book, as you may recall, but I hated the TV show. I'm not sure why I felt compelled to watch it. Maybe because a lot of the reviews I read suggested the TV show was better than the book? Regardless, I stuck with it. Maybe just out of morbid curiosity. I suppose the curiosity was largely about my own response to it. Why do I hate it so much? And so much more than the book, too. Why am I so alienated by a show by someone who is more or less my age taking place in the city I live in. Shouldn't I relate to this somehow? Is it just the bizarre intermeshing of millennial actors and styles with Gen X dialogue and t-shirts? I don't think so. One of the major differences between the book and the show is that we see a lot more of the narrator in the show. We get her story. We understand that the divorce she's telling us about is just a way for her to understand her own dissatisfaction with her own life. And the thing of it is, she's roiling with dissatisfaction. Like a lot of recent Gen X mother narratives, she's trying out abandoning her family and fascinated with another woman who has abandoned hers. But like, of course she's dissatisfied. She gave up her writing career to become a stay-at-home mom. And when people say to her, maybe you should go back to work, she somehow doesn't think that's the answer. It's a whole crisis about how she doesn't know who she is anymore, but like, she's changed her name, given up her career, and moved to the suburbs. It's not rocket science. And weirdly, the show is even further removed from the feminist movement than the book was. There's a reference to the future as female t-shirts, but no one wants to talk about it. The narrator not only works at a men's magazine, as she did in the book, but also idealizes a super sexist male writer and often rereads his super sexist books for fun. In the journey from the book to the screen, she's become one of those women who only like and hang out with men. More about this later. There is no sisterhood, only shared trauma. If this was true for the character in the book, it wasn't obvious. And everyone is just so shockingly unaware of their privilege. But also they're aching for meaning and searching for it desperately. The show seems to be trying to say something about middle age and getting older for our generation. And yet I can relate to none of it. The narrator doesn't recognize herself, doesn't know who she is anymore, and instead of doing stuff to help her find herself, she just shrugs and says, I guess that's what getting old means. No. Sorry. No. It's the choices you made, you silly rabbit. 
You gave up your last name, as does every married woman in this show, another generational disconnect. Millennial women are statistically much more likely to do that. Such a weird backslide. And also weird, coming from a writer with a hyphenated name. Anyway, you gave up your career. Like, what is this, 1955? Are you struggling with the problem that has no name? Read some feminist theory. God damn it. I guess that's the issue. Like, it's 2022. It should not be a mystery why a woman who has surrendered every aspect of herself, her name, her city, her work, her identity, might not be happy living with shallow people in the suburbs. It's not some existential conundrum. Like, of course, a fucking course. Put down the Philip Roth novels and go get yourself some Betty Friedan or Simone de Beauvoir or, like, Liz Plank. Maybe some Virginia Woolf if you're stuck on literary fiction. It reminds me of this woman I knew in my touring days who confessed to us, the other women on the tour, that she never really liked other women. She'd always hung out exclusively with men and allied herself with only men. Eight months into the tour, she got pretty sick of the men's shit and realized we, the other women on the tour, might be some support. Hence the confession. It's a strategic choice to ally with men and not a crazy one in any business run by men, which is most of them. But sooner or later, you're going to run into some sexism that those men will either be unwilling to look at or deal with, and you're going to need some women to help you. This TV show and book seem like a dramatization of that moment, but with no awareness that that is what's happening. If any of the women in this show had had just one good woman friend, it would have made a world of difference. This show is hard for me to sympathize with because I have many women friends I can turn to and have turned to all these years. I have been in the feminist movement this whole time. I don't need to try and figure out who I am now because I haven't made any choices outside of my own integrity and intention. I haven't surrendered any of myself, and I have trouble relating to these characters who just pushed themselves aside and called it a day. But I guess this is true for a lot of people who follow more conventional paths. Maybe you do find yourself in a beautiful house with a beautiful wife, and you may ask yourself, how did I get here? In the case of the people in this book, I can guess how you got there. But then this reference to talking heads once in a lifetime might just go right over the head of the writer of this book slash show because it was a hit in 1980 and a Gen X cultural touchstone. Come to think of it, it's probably the song the band at that barbecue ought to have been playing instead of Freebird. Freebird? Do they really use Freebird? Was once in a lifetime just too on the nose? I mean, we've known since we were kids that adults might be struggling with their beautiful houses and beautiful wives and the large automobiles or even the shotgun shacks. We've heard that it was the same as it ever was since 1980. We can even do the dance that goes along with it. Once in a Lifetime does a better job of summing up this show than the show does. Maybe that's why they didn't use it. Or the rights were just too expensive, and so they just went with Free Bird. Joke or no joke? In this case, it wasn't funny. So far, I have not heard of anyone else being bothered by the use of Free Bird in this show. But I do know I pay a lot more attention to incidental music in shows than most. So, I don't know. Anyway... As you probably have already worked out, there's only two songs that I can do here at the end of this particular blogcast. One of them is Freebird, and the other one is Once in a Lifetime. And I will tell you, Freebird would have been a lot easier. I did try. I tried. I, I got the chords. I, tr I played through maybe the first bit the verse I might have even gotten to the chorus I, I, I can't remember but I do know that I tried just a little bit and was like no 
I cannot. It is a, it is such a terrible song. It is, that's why it's a joke. Anyway, it's very bad. I'm sorry if you're a fan. There's many bad songs that I like, but this is not one of them. Wow. And the thing I was noticing today, I did listen to it again today to just, you know, get in the mood <laughs> for, I don't know. Anyway, uh, I think this song wants to be Led Zeppelin's Ramble On. Like, it's thematically the same idea, a little bit like, hey, baby, sorry, I got to go. I got to be free. Um, but Ramble On is a good song and much more complex, whereas Freebird is like the dumb version of Ramble On. Anyway, I don't know how it really went down, but... Whew. Like, I mean, sometimes I can get into a bad song, you know? I can be like, all right, there's nothing here, but wow, good times. Couldn't do it. So it had to be once in a lifetime. And uh, I will say, uh, I was pretty intimidated by it, <laughs> which is why I thought I should do Freebird instead. Um, but, uh, but it is a great song. And um, in the end, I had a delightful time working on it. Uh, and... I remembered that there's a really cool cover of it by Angelique Kijo. Kijo? I'm not sure how you pronounce her last name, but anyway, she does a really cool cover. And I thought about like covering her cover. Maybe that would be the theme for 2023 is just covering people's covers. Um, but it's just like so her. I like, I couldn't, I, it, yeah. And I thought, oh, I'll just throw in some elements now. So there's no Angelique Kijo in this cover that you'll hear shortly. Um, but I do urge you to check out her cover of Once in a Lifetime, as it is delightful. Um, so that's coming here shortly. Um, meanwhile, thank you so much for listening. If you like the podcast, please tell someone about it. Like, review, subscribe, send me a note. I don't know. That's always nice. Um, and if you'd like to support it with your dollars, amazing. Patreon.com slash Emily R. Davis. There's also Kofi. There's PayPal. All those links are in the show notes. And thank you most of all for, for listening and sticking it out here to the end. Um, much appreciated. Very much. Uh, right. So once in a lifetime. It's coming up here. Uh, you're going to hear me on guitar and a lot of Emily's. <laughs> so um, I don't think there's anything else I need to tell you about it. It's, uh, it's once in a lifetime. Same as it ever was. Enjoy. And you may find yourself in a shotgun shack. And you may find yourself in another part of the world. And you may find yourself behind the wheel of a large automobile. And you may find yourself in a beautiful house with a beautiful wife. And you may ask yourself, well, how did I get here? Letting the days go by. Let the water hold me down. Letting the days go by. Water flowing underground. Into the blue of after the money's gone Once in a lifetime Water flowing underground And you may ask yourself How do I work this? And you may ask yourself Where is that large automobile? And you may tell yourself This is not my beautiful house And you may tell yourself This is not my beautiful wife Letting the days go by Let the water hold me down Letting the days go by Water flowing into the blue again After the money's gone Once in a lifetime Water flowing underground Same as it ever was 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 Water dissolving And water removing there was water at the bottom of the ocean. Under the water, carrying the water, 
remove the water at the bottom of the ocean. Water dissolving and water removed. The days go by. Let the water hold me down. Letting the days go by. Water flowing underground. Into the blue again. Into the silent water. Under the rocks and stones. There is water underground. Letting the days go by. Let the water hold me down. Letting the days go by. Water flowing underground. Into the blue again. After the money's gone. Once in a lifetime. Water flowing underground. You may ask yourself, what is that beautiful house? You may ask yourself, where does that highway go to? And you may ask yourself, am I right? Am I wrong? And you may say to yourself, my God, what have I done? Letting the days go by. Let the water hold me down. Letting the days go by. Water flowing underground. Into the blue again. Into the silent water. Under the rocks and stones. There is water underground. Letting the days go by. Let the water hold me down. Letting the days go by. Water flowing underground. Into the blue again. After the money's gone. Once in a lifetime. Water flowing underground. Same as it ever was. Same as it ever was. Same as it ever was. And look where my hand was. Time isn't holding up. Time isn't after us. Same as it ever was. 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 Letting the days go by. Same as it ever was. Letting the days go by. Here twister comes. Here comes the twister. Letting the days go ever was. Same as it ever was. Letting the days go ever was. Same as it ever was. Letting the days go once in a lifetime. Letting the days go by. Letting the days go by. Letting the days go by. Into the blue.